Welcome to Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners. I'm Dr. Edmund Sokowski, and I'd like to welcome my brother, Dr. William Sokowski, to the show. Bill, welcome to Thank you Healthy very Pets, much. Healthy Owners. We have an interesting topic today, and I think it's so important. You know, in dentistry, dentistry, there's a lot of aspects of dentistry, but one of the biggest aspects of dentistry is prevention. And I know in your office, Bill, in Cannonsburg, that you, you promote prevention over anything else. One of the biggest problems people have is with tooth loss is not from decay, but from gum disease. Would you tell us about gum disease and how we can prevent that and how we treat it? That's the focus of the show today. Thank you, Doctor. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, gum disease is called periodontal disease, and periodontal disease is rampant in modern society. And it affects your health in so, so many ways. There's been a link to peri from periodontal disease to heart disease and cancer and uh, liver disease and uh, low birth weight. So it's, it's very important that your health begins in your mouth in terms of how healthy your mouth is determines how healthy you will be uh, as you age. So is, does perio disease, periodontal disease, th this gum problem affect older people more than it does younger people? There's, periodontal disease affects everybody no matter what age you are, but there are factors uh, uh, lack of brushing properly, lack of flossing, lack of professional cleaning that over time will exacerbate gum disease. Smoking is a major problem with gum disease. So at any age, bless you, at any age you can have uh, a form of gum disease, but the more virulent forms of gum disease are usually seen in, in older adults. And it's a progressive disease. If it's untreated, unchecked, uh, there's, it's, you have to maintain uh, good oral health. Uh, you can stop the progression of the disease, of the disease. You cannot, uh, you have to manage it. You have to brush by brushing properly, flossing properly, having your teeth cleaned by uh, professionals in a dental office. It affects your overall health to a, such a high degree and every day we're learning more about the effects of uh, having bad gums, bleeding gums, periodontal disease, and chronic health problems. It's, it's epidemic in this country. So what are some of the signs and symptoms that I would notice before I ever walk into your office? Well, one of the, the biggest things people tell me is, well, when I, my gums always bleed uh, when I brush or when I floss, or another symptom is bad breath. Nobody wants bad breath. And gum disease is, it's an infection. It's a bacterial infection of the gums. And it's, so I always... It's the bacteria that's bringing out that foul odor? It's the bacteria. And in our office, we have uh, periodontists who uh, actually do bacterial cultures of the gum tissue to see what kind of bacteria is in there so that oftentimes it can be treated with a, sp a specific uh, medicament to uh, eradicate the, the bacteria. In addition to uh, flossing techniques, brushing techniques, uh, deeper cleanings where you, you clean the teeth below the gums. Oftentimes, depending on how bad gum disease, disease is, there has to be a, 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 a procedure either with laser and or uh, tissue uh, um, cutting of the tissue. So if I was to see bleeding gums, that's a signal for me. It's a bleeding gums when I brush. What about bleeding gums when I eat? That's the thing I always tell people. They oftentimes don't notice it when they're eating, but it's happening when they're eating. I can touch gums with a, with a probe and barely touch them and they'll start to bleed. And I tell people when they're eating any hard foods, and we do, you know, crusts of bread, crackers, pretzels, nuts, nuts you're causing bleeds the, uh, in many areas uh, around the tooth. And when that area is cut essentially by your chewing, bacteria is getting into your bloodstream and it's getting into your bloodstream, what I say is 24-7, 365. So it's, it would be like having a cut on your arm and walking through a sewer. You're getting bacteria and then your body wants to fight that bacteria in your bloodstream. And, when, and that's where they're finding evidence in, in studies where the same bacteria that's in your mouth, they find in your coronary arteries um, uh, and, and um, in your 
carotid arteries uh, that shouldn't be there. And only one way to get it in is through bleeding gums. So when we have, when we ingest something that has a bacterium in there, we have a natural process, a protective process with stomach acid and, and so forth, that our body sends that, whatever we eat, right into our liver to clear that out and so forth. But when we're actually, it's almost like taking a hypodermic needle of bacteria, injecting it right into the bloodstream. Because the infection, if you get a cut on your arm, you're getting bacteria into your, into your body. But that'll heal. Uh, through the natural process. But when you have gum disease, you never heal. It's an open wound, and the bacteria in your mouth is the same bacteria in your digestive tract. I tell, I make people understand that, that it's good bacteria and bad bacteria, but it's bacteria. And this bacteria is getting into your bloodstream through your gums. Yeah, it's not necessarily and harmful when it gets in your intestinal tract so much, it's harmful when it gets absorbed into the gums and, and bypasses that safety mechanism. And it's epidemic, chronic, and I can't tell you the number of people, I've been doing this a long time, that in, in their 60s and 70s, if they've had gum disease untreated, unchecked, and they have many other health problems. They have it, 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 diabetes is, is, is uh, is exacerbated by gum disease. Heart disease is exa exacerbated uh, by gum disease. Uh, dementia is exacerbated by gum disease. Uh, and you can go down the list, um, even they're talking about certain forms of cancer because it's a cr prolonged chronic inflammation. And we know where there's inflammation, there's disease, and where there's disease, there's inflammation. And so if I look in the mirror. And the beauty of this, Dr. Edmund, is that it can, it's totally preventable totally manageable, to the extent curable, manageable. In other words, you can get rid of, if somebody can come in with bad gums and bad breath and bleeding gums and, and pus coming out of their gums, follow a protocol, be, do their due diligence, and walk away after a period of time with, with no bleeding, no pr particular pocketing where food can get stuck into the gums, and, no and they infection. manage their uh, the periodontist oftentimes has to come into it, but oftentimes the general dentist, we have just incredible numbers of great general dentists in this local area that know how to diagnose, know how to treat, and, and I always say it's, you manage these diseases, and you, they are manageable. So if, you, if I looked in my mouth in, in, in the mirror, what would I see besides the bleeding gums? What would You'd, my see gums look swollen. Like? You'd see swollen. You'd see a swollen area. They would be red around almost uh, like a defined line of red depending on the stage of the gum problem you'll see gum should be pink and you in order to uh, make gums bleed you have to almost cut them if they're healthy gums you cannot make them bleed by brushing you cannot make them bleed by flossing you cannot make them bleed by eating if they're not healthy all of those things will cause your gums to bleed so bleeding is the sign and this puffiness around your gums in a red line, basically, of inflammation, you'll see pink at the top and somewhat red around the margins of the teeth, and that's very indicative. Now, some of that is localized gener and, uh, in terms of, you know, the people who are not brought kids in general can, may not floss, so you have some gingivitis. Very reversible, just by brushing and flossing, getting your teeth cleaned by a professional. So how often should I walk in an office and have my teeth cleaned? You know, it's interesting. We'll go get our hair fixed every three months and, you know, and we'll do all these yeah, cosmetics. So some people are the hairdresser every week. Well, every, yeah, yeah. that's, yeah. But I'm, I'm, what I mean to say is, you know, they'll, no problems with getting, but going to the dentist to have your teeth cleaned uh, or brushing or flossing because you don't see this oftentimes, you know, you don't see the gum disease in the back part of your mouth, you just see the front teeth. They kind of say, well, once or twice a year is enough for me. It isn't for a lot of people. Some people have to get their teeth cleaned every two months or every three months. And, and the so bottom line is, do you want to stay healthy, keep your teeth healthy, and stay healthy? Then what you do whatever it takes to do it. So and if it requires you to have your teeth cleaned more often, every two or three months, so, so smokers it's would, a no-brainer. Smokers should be getting their teeth clean more often. They should be stopping the smoking process. But if they're smoking, they need to have their teeth clean. Mouth breathers. Mouth and there's medications dry your mouth out, which can lead to periodontal disease. Uh, the CPAPs and the BiPAPs that people are using dries your mouth out. So, if you have a, 
of diagnosed with a problem of a gum problem, you should have your teeth cleaned more often than, than the average person. That's the average. The average person twice a year, get your teeth clean, uh, assess where you're maybe missing with the brushing, talk about flossing. Not a, it's interesting that gum disease affects a multitude of people, you know, high percentages of people. Uh, but it can be prevented by flossing, but most people don't want to floss, so you have to coach them into flossing. How often do you brush? Once a day. You need to brush twice a day. The new recommendations are almost every time you eat. It used to be flossing once a day. Now they're saying flossing twice a day. So what is the, the water picks are good, but they don't replace flossing. The electric toothbrushes are great, but they, you still have to floss. And you still should do a manual so, toothbrush. So what does flossing, flossing actually do? Well, when you're brushing, you're brushing all the surfaces that you can see, the front part, the top part, the inside. It's between the teeth that become problematic with brushing. And flossing will clean between the teeth. Now the water picks that they're talking about that shoot water, and they are, they're very good for getting a lot of that interdental problem fixed, the debris out of there. but still yet the contact area of the teeth have to be flossed. Because floss is um, like brushing where you can't get a brush in the Yeah, middle. it's like I say, well, say, I don't floss. I say, do you brush? They'll say, yeah, well, if the same thing. If, if you don't, wouldn't brush, you, why would you not floss, you know? It, it, it's, it's, one of, it's one of those things where you brush every day, sure I do. You should floss every day too for the same reason. So it doesn't matter whether wax floss or, or what type whatever of floss works it is. for you, whatever works for you. It's 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 mechanical debridement of teeth. In other words, you can have a mouthwash, kill some bacteria. You know there are alcohol in mouthwashes, a lot of the active ingredients, and there's some other chemicals. Frankly, mouthwash, you know, mouth deodorants to make your breath smell good. Don't you know? Or in my opinion, better than the mouthwashes. But mouthwashes do not replace the mechanical debridement of teeth. Flossing and brushing and, and even the water picks, so to speak, and the electronic toothbrushes, it's mechanical debridement. They have a, this plaque is a biofilm. Um, a biofilm meaning it's a film of biological. It's a colony. A colony of bacteria and nasty stuff. And so you have to keep that off your gums and teeth, otherwise teeth will rot. So we're not seeing as much decay, but we're seeing, I'm seeing a resurgence of gum disease. And, 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 you, and I think it has a lot to do with these uh, um, tobacco, you know, the, the tobacco products, the um, snuff, a lot snuff. of people are doing that, and that's not a good idea for cancer causing reasons and also for the, the chemicals. Smoking of cigarettes, and frankly, these vape things, still have uh, chemicals in them. And, Plus uh, the, the heat, there's heat associated yeah, with it. So, that. I mean, there's a, I see gum disease not slowing down. I see a resurgence of gum disease. And the bottom line is if you do not have, let's make it in a positive, if you have healthy gums, you are healthy physiologically as you mature, it, you know, in your 60s and 50, late 50s and 70s and beyond. If your gums are not healthy, you you see people uh, that as they age and mature have debilitating diseases and then you look in their mouth and you say, well, is this the cart, you know, what did the gums cause the problems or did the diabetes cause the gum disease? Do you see? And it's coming down to, to the fact that over many, many years, bad gums and bad abscesses and infections in your mouth is causing heart disease, is exacerbating diabetes, is exacerbating the, the, the cancer spread, problems as well. uh, liver problems, kidney yeah. problems, and brain problems. These, these dementia issues are often associated with many, many years of insults and, uh, and heart issues of bacteria getting into your bloodstream. So we, we talked about the bad breath, we talked about the bleeding, the swollen gums. What about the teeth themselves? What happens with gum disease in, in teeth? Well, it used to be that, you know, the mantra was, you know, correct your gum problems, save your teeth. And it's a wonderful mantra. You know, protect your gum, teeth by protecting your gums. It goes so far beyond that to the medical. In other words, medical, dentistry's medicine. It used to be 
way back when the attachment between medicine and dentistry was vague. Now the attachment, when I have, the physicians are sending patients to me to get checked out before they have heart work done, to make sure their gums. Or transplants. Or transplants, or knee replacements, or hip replacements. Uh, and there's a reason for that. And I'll tell you about that in a second. But that didn't happen years and years ago, the, the, the dental relationship with the health relationship. Because a physician does not want to put a heart valve in. This bacteria is going to kill that heart valve. They do not want to put a knee in that the bacteria in your mouth is going to kill that knee. Because once it gets in your blood, it can go anywhere. And it's facts. This is not speculation. There, Many, many people have had bad gums and the bacteria is lodging in the most vulnerable part, uh, oftentimes the knee that was replaced, the hip that was replaced, the heart fell. So you cannot have um, healthy, you know, a healthy chemistry of your body and a healthy longevity with gums that are that are not healthy. So in, in fact, if you have an artificial knee or you have a valve replacement, before you can have a dental procedure done, you have to take an antibiotic, a prophylaxis to, to, to kill the bacteria before you And migrate. there's a reason for that. So in other words, what yeah. you're saying, Dr. Edmund, is a physician will say, hey, we just did a knee replacement. Before you have any dental procedure, we want to cover you with an antibiotic. And what's the reason for that? Here's the reason. When you have a dental procedure, depending on the extent of the dental procedure, there's going to be a little bit of bleeding when you have a crown prep, when you have a root canal, when you have, and when, and when you have an extraction, that's a major, major insult to the body. So this bacteria is getting in your bloodstream. Now this bacteria is, can lodge in the knee that was replaced, and then you have to add infection in the knee. And so physicians now, almost to a point, are sending people in for clearance. Is there any abscesses? Are there gum, is there gum disease? Are the gums bleeding? Are the gums healthy? Are there cavities? Because even cavities in your teeth are harboring bacteria. So, you know, holes, decay, cavities. So that's bacteria that caused the acid to demineralize the tooth. It's harboring bacteria. You, you, you get this bacteria and if your gums are bleeding, it's going into your bloodstream all the time. Yeah. So all of that stuff that creates this inflammation, and it, it, this bacteria actually causes the bone to, to go away that holds the teeth in. It's a reaction. Uh, if you had a splinter in your finger, you'd have a red redness. And this redness is your body saying, I got a splinter there. I got to get it out of there. It's a foreign body. Gum disease operates the same way. You have this biofilm, you have this plaque, and as it gets hard, it becomes calcified, like around a sink or around your, you know, you see around a faucet, it's calcified. And the body wants to fight that. And the body says, that doesn't belong there. And it sends out uh, markers to fight that. But what happens is it eats away at the bone. So uh, we have that these, spongy bone that surrounds our teeth. That's softer. It's softer, and it just that inflammation just causes that to dis disintegrate. So th then when they say old people, older people, long of tooth, it usually was gum disease back in the day, because the bone level shrinks to the point where the teeth no longer stay in there. And then the that's gum goes, end stage gum disease. The we gum don't, goes away as we well. We see less of that because people are becoming more aware, and that's one of the reasons why that you. It's great that you do this, and. It, and if you even touch a few people, depending on the numbers, to, to make them want and the need to brush and floss and get to go to the dentist and get their gums checked. And we, we do that. We have screenings in our office uh, uh, for those who want to have a periodontal uh, a screening to see if they have gum disease, if they don't have a, uh, currently have a dentist. Um, you know, we see people all the time to just give an assessment, and we oftentimes uh, do it as a, a, a public uh, affairs kind of uh, promotion to just have, show, you know, see if people have a problem, and if they want to address it, they can address it. So, so you you were talking about this biofilm. What's what is calculus and plaque and and and, and the different terms that you'd use to diagnose conditions of the oral cavity? Well. Plaque is the soft stuff. So, like when you have you go you have a breakfast and you have a lunch, 
and if you don't brush your teeth, you know, the saliva will rinse some of it away, but you'll have little colonies of, of um, residual food, basically, that, f that combines with the saliva and the bacteria in your mouth. It makes this called plaque, which is very soft. So, so that you, plaque... You could take that off with a toothbrush, you could take it off, off with, with your brush, fingernail. Take it off with, you know, flossing, and, and then it, once it's off, it does not create a problem with your cavity situation or with your gums or with your overall health. If you leave that there long enough around your gums and teeth and in the right environment of everybody's mouth a little bit dry most of the time, and if you leave that in there a while, it'll become hard and it's almost, you can't brush it away. And what do we call that? We call that calculus, yeah. calcified plaque. In other words, you got the soft plaque that you can brush away. If you leave it, that's the importance of having them cleaned regularly because the, if, if everybody misses a little bit, you know, you can, you know, some areas are more plaque prone and then that plaque will get hard. Everybody has a little bit of a technique problem, upper left, bottom on the interior, anterior of your teeth. So there's always a, most people have a little bit, I do, and I have my teeth cleaned every two months. That's the same. I'm in the yeah. office every two months two getting months. my teeth cleaned. And, you know, it's a quickie thing and you move forward. And, but I, once it's plaque, it, you can brush it off. Once it gets hard, you need a professional. With to, special instruments. To special instrument and it just cleans that stuff on. And then it becomes uh, back to ground zero. Everything's good. You know, you leave it six months, it becomes stage one. And s one year, it's major stage two pr is issues. A year, two goes by. So this thing about going to the dentist every six months, you know, I used to, uh, you know, it's not a, you know, it's, believe me, it's not for the dentist. There are plenty of people that need a lot of help. It's the patient that wants to keep them, that is, wants to stay healthy, wants to take care of themselves, you know, they're, they're doing wonderful things otherwise in their health, but if they're not having their teeth clean, they're only kidding themselves. Well, you know, you used to they always should say be lined up outside the dentist's door to have their teeth cleaned if they knew the 100% the impact of gum disease and overall health. The biggest thing is, is uh, heart disease and dementia. You know, if you have gum disease, you're, you're going to have a greater risk of those two things that are very, very debilitating as you get older. Well, I always remember you say, if you ignore your teeth, they'll go away. Ignore you your still teeth, say they'll go away. Ignore your teeth, they'll go away. And it's an interesting paradigm there because what do we do? We, we, tr you know, we try to exercise, we try to eat well, you know, we try to take, you know, do the right things by not smoking. We try to take our vitamins. We go get a eye checkup, you know, because we want to see. Uh, I want to make sure we catch something in its early stages. We go to the, you know, the protocols for colonoscopies, uh, get your heart checked to make sure the rhythm is good. We're doing all these things, you know, if you're not having your teeth clean every two, uh, uh, every, you know, twice a year uh, and getting something, dentistry is preventative, fillings are preventative, crowns are preventative to keep the teeth from breaking. Uh, you can go on and on and on. The, the, the professional cleaning, what I'm finding out, is probably the greatest uh, um, uh, greatest thing can, that can be done to keep your health. Well, you know, a lot of people don't realize that when you lose your teeth, you can't chew your food, and then you start having digestive problems, absorption problems and so forth and that leads back to what you're saying regarding your overall health you know if you can't supply the nutrients to your body then your body goes into illness well what happens over time is people adapt if they don't have certain teeth to chew on then they start to they, well I'm not going to eat this I'm not going to eat the meat I'm not going to eat the celery I'm not going to eat the carrots uh, they, they change their diet to, to adapt to whatever teeth they have or don't mm -hmm. have uh, and and then it becomes nutritional deficiencies over time, whereas the person with good healthy gums and good healthy teeth, they say, well, I'm going to have that celery tonight. I'm going to have those carrots. I'm going to have that steak. I'm going to have that, uh, um, you know, 
uh, type of food that requires chewing, you know, requires back teeth, that requires, uh, uh, and, and at the other end of it, if you don't have healthy gums, you know, I always tell people, I said, gee whiz, you know, it affects your, you know, you have gum disease, it affects your breath without, you know, what I, I want to yeah, say, I, what I want to say is, you know, gee whiz, you're offending people with your breath within a short, you know, because you, you're, you stink. People don't realize you know? that, but, and I, we're real sensitive to it too, I think, being dentists, but that odor really extends out from the mouth when it's a gum disease odor, not like coffee breath odor or something like that. It's a, it's a very foul, offensive odor. You get used to it if you have it, but the people that you're encountering pick it up right away. Well, and and you, you know? can tell gum disease yeah. by the odor. Uh, uh, so breath out and and I got to think you know d if you're around people who uh, who do who, you know who have this uh, smell um, gum disease you know you would want them to correct it very quickly what is a pocket okay so the gum fits around the tooth like a this collar around my neck okay so it, it, it's a protective collar and it's it, it's supposed the gum uh, depth of the gum around the tooth should be one to three millimeters. So when I can, if I were to brush around the tooth, around, it's easy to get plaque out of there. When the pocket of the gum gets very deep into this collar, so to speak, you cannot brush, you cannot clean your teeth so yourself. So that food and bacteria gets lodged underneath the gum. It stays there. And, and, and that's, that's, and it exacerbates itself and that's the major gum disease. So professional cleanings do that, and then you have actually deep cleanings if they're necessary. Well, when we find a new patient that has a major amount of accumulation of debris below the gum, we get that out of there, get them on a good brushing and flossing technique, we see them again, and to see if they're making progress, and see if those pockets will shrink to very and they often, manageable stages, and they, with, often, and they do. often do. You know, we're, we're at the end of the show, Dr. Bill, I want to tell everybody that your, your office number is 724-745-0103. And if anybody out there, you know, doesn't hurt, currently have a dentist and wants to come into the office for a complimentary screening on for their gum, bleeding gums, we'd be glad to uh, okay. see them. Just call the office and say they you, you saw this and, TV program. And, and you can go to SokowskiDental.com also and, and look at your website. We're at the end of the show, Dr. Bill. I want to thank everybody for watching Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners. Remember, you can hear me live every Saturday morning on Healthy Pets, Healthy People on AM 1250, The Answer, at 9 o'clock. You could actually call in and ask any questions. In fact, I think Dr. Bill will be on this show here this week. We'll see you next time on Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners. Remember, a healthy pet's a happy pet. When you're healthy, you're happy too. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Ed.